the Great Ocean Road. Is this one of Australia's best road tripping routes? Let's find out as we jump in the car and hit the road for 240 kilometres of breathtaking scenery. Great Ocean Road starts here at the coastal town of Torquay. And Torquay is the home of surfing here in Victoria. It's where you'll find all the international surf brands that uh, originated in this town. And the reason for all of this surf culture here is this, Bells Beach, Australia's spiritual home of surfing. And as you might see, there's actually nobody surfing because it's still, it's still very early spring and it's very cold and windy. Um, but you know, that doesn't stop, stop a few hardy fools. A couple of foolish guys here. Oh, come on. <laughs> How was it? Not worth it? Probably yeah. not. <laughs> so the Great Ocean Road starts around about here at Torquay and uh, it's 240 kilometres in that direction, west. It goes from Torquay to Allensford, which is just out of Warrnambool. So that's 240 k's of spectacular scenery. I've got my coffee. I've got a croissant, I'm going to jump in the car, pump up the music, let's go road tripping. Yeah, sunny day, sunny day, sunny days, no clouds in the sky but again, the way it feels like it's been a freaking decade, sorry don't call because I'm gonna be on break, sunny day, sunny day, make way, all the stress and doubt, yeah not today, feels like it's been a freaking decade, sorry don't call because I'm gonna be on break. Fresh car sushi on a platter, ready, honey, it don't matter, shots. Till I drop, drop, gonna be 24 7, golden hour like a boss. And they say, yo, guess you gotta. This is the river heading to the beach in Anglesey, one of the many beautiful little tourist towns along the Great Ocean Road. I still love the beach, it doesn't matter whether the weather's sunny or wild, there's still something pretty special about being on an ocean beach. beautiful old lighthouse and the really cool thing is for ten dollars you can go inside and have a look around and for fans of Australian children's TV this is where they film round the twist these are shipwrecks that happened in the 1800s which prompted us to build these lighthouses you're about to go up this one which is split point built in 1891 how cool actually going up to the top of a lighthouse
friendly up here. But my God, you got a great view. And I can actually see a ship out here, but it's not a sail ship, it's a modern cargo ship. So that's Aries Inlet behind us, and then further down the coast is Lawn. I was just chatting with the really knowledgeable woman who's um, guiding people through here. This was built in 1891. It still works today. It's not kerosene lamp, it's automated and it's LED lights and stuff, but um, still operates. How awesome. One hundred and thirty-six steps, I'm told, from bottom to top. Really? And it feels like 110. That was very cool going up that lighthouse, and I highly recommend it if you're at uh, where are we? Aries, <laughs> Aries Inlet. Then um, on weekends they're open, ten dollars to go up and have a look. Um, well worth it. And the woman at the top knew everything about it. She could have talked your ear off for hours and hours about it. Um, really knowledgeable. Anyway, I don't have time to stay and listen to the whole story because we've still got plenty of road to cover on the Great Ocean Road. I love how the Great Ocean Road hugs the coastline for most of its length and it's so spectacular. But you know what? This is just the beginning. It gets even better further up the road. Coming into the town of Lawn, which is quite a busy tourist town, uh, gets really busy in summertime. really is one of the great Australian road trip roads and whether you live in Australia or you're coming here to to visit you've got to drive along the Great Ocean Road If you're going to do the Great Ocean Road, that's how you do it.
There's some beautiful holiday houses and old farms along the Great Ocean Road, especially as you get further along. But, oh my God, check this out. <laughs> they have their own waterfall, and it's a really impressive one. <laughs> and if that's not good enough, look, we got the beach over the road. Yeah, I want to be a millionaire, and I want to live there. How cool is that? With your own waterfall. I can't believe it. You're greeted by a waterfall on a wild ocean beach. Gibson Steps, with its waterfall and sheer cliffs, has to be one of Victoria's most dramatic beaches. Can you hear the roar of that ocean? It is really roaring. It is thundering in. Wow. <sighs> Woohoo! <laughs> It's not even tourist season and this place is busy. I think we have about eight apostles left. It used to be 12, but because it's sandstone and the waves are crashing onto them, they kind of fall over, fall over and die basically. I remember coming here when I was a young man. You'd be lucky to see half a dozen people here. And now there's loads of people here. And in the days when I used to come, there wasn't a walkway. So you just scrambled on the cliff edge. It probably wasn't very safe, but she was fun. So it's quite busy and it's not even spring yet. In summertime, times that by at least 10. Um, but that's one of the things about this time of year. It's uh, cool, you get to see Victoria's premier tourist attractions without the crowds. So the Twelve Apostles are one of Victoria's serious tourist attractions. A lot of people here. You can even see it by air in a helicopter. I'll find out the cost in case you're interested. I'm definitely not. As a man who's terrified of heights, it's um, hard enough standing on the edge of a cliff, let alone going up in the sky. <laughs> so not for me. And at $165 each per person, there's no shortage of people taking them up on it.
So the crowds were getting a little bit too much for me yesterday and it was getting late and the light was kind of going anyway. So I doubled back to Apollo Bay, camped there for the night and now it's the next morning, Sunday morning. I'm up early and uh, heading to Lockard Gorge. There's an incredible story about this place. In 1878, the three-masted clipper Lockard was uh, on its way to Melbourne and got caught in a storm and was shipwrecked, which happened quite a bit in these parts. And uh, everybody died except for two people. One was a gentleman called Tom Pierce, who was a deckhand on the ship. He got washed up at this little beach here. And then he noticed somebody else in the water Eva Carmichael, 18 year old woman. So he swam back out and rescued her and dragged her onto the beach here. But how lucky were they? Because the opening to this gorge is maybe 25 meters wide. If they were washed up into the rocks, either side of this gorge, they both would have been dead. And Tom apparently struggled for an hour to bring Eva to shore. When they did, um, they took shelter in a cave at the back of the beach. And then eventually Tom somehow managed to clamber out of this deep gorge and uh, go in search of help. And so the two were rescued by Stockman. So you can see why most people died in that shipwreck. They would have been washed up against these rocks and there would have been no hope. Apparently, despite the really heroic efforts of the locals, they could only recover four bodies, and they're buried here at the Lockhart Cemetery, right next to the gorge. And this is the beautiful little uh, fishing village of Port Campbell. Okay, got a coffee, sun's out, let's move on.
and this is the little hamlet of Peterborough. Have a look. On one side, we've got this. But on the other, look at this. Martyrs is this place. So, like a lot of this coast, it's pretty incredible. Well, I'm going to finish my uh, Great Ocean Road trip here. I've got a long drive ahead of me to get back. Um, I do suggest if you ever come up this way, it doesn't matter what time of year, come now. You beat the summer crowds, it gets busy in summer. Um, allow yourself at least two days. Uh, maybe drive up to Apollo Bay and camp the night there. There's plenty of accommodation, and then from there, you can go on to the next section, which is uh, Lockhart, the Twelve Apostles, all the famous parts, and uh, spend the next night in Port Campbell. Lots of beautiful accommodation there. Most people then go on to Warrnambool. I'm not gonna do that because I have to get back for work tomorrow. <laughs> um, but otherwise, allow another day to drive back to Melbourne. It's quite a drive. I'm about to take off now. I totally love this, but guess what? Because I'm driving back to Melbourne, I get to do the whole thing again in reverse. Oh yeah! <laughs> See you next time.